Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and so today we are going to do the team building guide for the LR Super Saiyan 3 EZA Goku finally coming to global. Uh, this is a standard LR EZA so it is only 10 stages. Uh, I know we all wish that every EZA could be like this going forward uh, so much quicker and easier and you still get 30 stones because you get 3 stones per stage completed instead of 1. So at the very end, you get your 30 stones. You also get, of course, the medals to EZA, the Goku 5 tech type Kai's. So you can get them straight to SA25. And there is the mission, uh, every LR EZA has the exact same one for just beating stage 7. Gives you an extra 3 stones. Interesting that they have one just for stage 7 and not one for beating the whole thing. Um, but it is what it is, right? So it means you get 33 stones in total. So... LR EZA, the weakness is Resurrected Warriors. Now, when it comes to LR EZAs, the difference, of course, between these and the normal 30 stage ones, as we know for TURs, is that we have the specialist category, Resurrected Warriors, which means that those uh, units will take less damage. So non-Resurrected Warriors can take a pretty considerable amount of damage from the boss. But to, in terms of damage, legendary power and having that link active is the primary way that you can do big damage to this boss. Now, you can beat LR EZAs with full teams of TURs. I have done it before. It just takes longer, right, because you're not getting the bonus damage. But you are able to bring non-resurrected warriors LRs. And whilst they will take big damage, they can still do very big damage because the... Uh, ability to do damage to Goku isn't based on being a resurrected warrior. You get the extra buff from just having legendary power. So it is possible, depending on your box, to just bring your best team of a bunch of hard hitting LRs. Like you could run, you know, physical god Goku as a leader and then run a bunch of really good, powerful, pure Saiyan LRs. Essentially pray that god Goku gets the dodges and then the LRs pop off and do big damage. Um, but that gets a lot harder when you get to the later stages. Like when I had my secondary JP account that wasn't particularly good, I remember I did the first like five or six stages of this and then started to find it a lot more difficult, right? Because any characters, non-resurrected warriors taking hits would just get absolutely destroyed. So if you got a bad starting rotation, it was instant game over. So you have to think about that. But you can brute force your way through um, if that is, you know, the only way you can build a team for the event so because the uh, category is resurrected warriors we're going to be taking a look at the category here as always with my team building guides i'll go over my top picks and honorable mentions for characters for the team if you think there's anyone i missed out or should have talked more about do let me know down below in the comment section and of course if you find the guide helpful at all do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new so starting us off obviously unsurprisingly with easy a's that drop during big celebrations they uh, very often gear it towards the new unit. So Harudagan is a resurrected warrior's leader. And then he has legendary existence or transformation boost as his plus 30%. So you can get a few people on this team build that will have the full 200% leader skill. But Harudagan obviously going to be very good for this. Got type advantage. Uh, raises defense on super. Has the dodging ability. And of course, if he's in slot one and you get a dodge before he attacks, he then has that extra attack chance as well, as well as building up defense with each attack that he evades. Um, now, when it comes to his transformation, you can get it on turn three as long as you're at 70% or less HP. So in some of the earlier stages, especially when it's not as hard, you're probably not going to see this. You may get through all 10 stages without ever seeing it, to be honest. But it is there and can be used, um, especially in those... You know, last couple of stages if you are taking some big hits. But chances are, I imagine a lot of people, even if you use Harudagan or a Harudagan friend, uh, will never see him transform throughout the course of the 10 stages. But he can still be very useful and, of course, has the uh, probably the better leader skill. He probably has the best leader skill because he's the only Resurrected Warriors lead that can give units like a 200%. Aside from one very specific example that we'll talk about, but that is for a much more limited build of the team right so Harudagan go to for the leader if you actually did summon for him and get him I know a lot of people skipped him on global of course being in the build up to the anniversary but if you do have him he's probably the best choice for the leader 
then next up we have the uh, LR Golden Freezer. So LR Golden Freezer leaves Resurrected Warriors for 4 key and 150% of stats. Lower stats, but of course if you are running a bunch of LRs, having the extra key is quite nice. And, uh, you know, this guy... In longer form events, he started to become a bit more outdated as content has gotten harder as well as longer. So he uh, is running out of damage reduction and taking big damage from the end of these events. But in something like an Extreme Z battle, which will often only go for three or four turns at most anyway, um, he's always going to be tanking very, very well, even against this Goku where he has type disadvantage. So, you know, turn one, you can put him in slot one, even if he's getting supered, he's going to be eating all of those attacks. Um, and then his damage is okay, right? He gets the additional super. He does have type disadvantage, so if he's not critting, then of course he's not going to be doing a lot of damage to the boss. But being an LR and having legendary power, he is getting that little bit of a bonus anyway. So I would say he is an absolute go-to for the team. I wouldn't pick him as the number one choice for leader, obviously because that percentage is a little bit lower. But he certainly is a go-to unit to use on the team. Remember, with Extreme Z battles, you can't use units with the same name. So you could only use one Golden Freezer. So you can use this guy or the AGL Tech or Int TURs, but not more than one of them. Um, this guy would be the best one in terms of the overall uh, setup for the team. Not only has he got the really good defense, but he's an LR. So he's adding to the pool of units on your team that will then be able to activate Legendary Power. So he's the one you would go for out of the various different Golden Freezers as long as you have him, right? And then, of course, we do have the Int Angel Freezer, uh, Int Angel Golden Freezer, who got his EZA very much uh, not impressive EZA, but he's a Resurrected Warriors lead for full 170. He's got type advantage. He greatly raises defense on super. So, I mean, he's not a crazy unit by any stretch of the imagination, but in this event specifically, he can be pretty good. Uh, he has got a unique name, of course, because he is Angel Golden Freezer. So he's definitely a worthwhile addition to the team for this specific event, uh, right? Because of the uh, just being an int resurrected warrior. Now, of course, he's not an LR. So normally, I would say the strategy for this is to bring as many LRs as possible so that you have legendary power active as much as possible. But this guy can make a very good stand in leader for anyone who did not summon for Harudagon. He's a bit of an older unit that you potentially have. Have him easy aid, probably haven't used him for a while but is certainly a good unit to use as the leader for this event in particular. Um, also, I wanted to give a shout out to LR Bojack. So LR Bojack, uh, you know, if you really, have, really are struggling for a leader, he has uh, extreme int types 4 key and HP attack and defense 120. Now, considerably lower than some of the other leader skills, but, you know, you can very easily just build a full extreme int team with this guy um, and you could run him in that way. But... Regardless of whether or not you want to use him as a leader, he can be a very, very good option uh, on the team. He does get extra buffs per extreme ally on the team. If there's a space traveling warrior ally in the same turn, he creates rainbow orbs, which can be beneficial for bridging the key gaps for everyone on the rotation. Um, so he's actually like a unit that hasn't aged super well in terms of the difficult content. But for any of these things like extreme Z battles, battlefield, all that kind of stuff, he can still be very, very good. So I would definitely recommend having him on the team, especially if you do have a couple of other Space Traveling Warriors characters, getting that orb changing can be very, very helpful as well. So Bojack, definitely a good addition, kind of a last resort leader if you need it, but he certainly can be uh, pretty decent. Um, then we have the uh, LR Perfect Cell. So LR Perfect Cell leads Android slash Cell Saga. Um, there's not a ton of Resurrected Warriors on that category, of course, but, I mean, you could make a full extreme int team. You can bring units like the physical LR androids and kind of rely on the dodge because they're not resurrected warriors. So if they're not dodging, they will be taking huge damage. But I wouldn't say this guy is a very high uh, on the list option for being a leader for the team. However, he's right up there in terms of units that you want to bring actually on the team for the event, right? He can hit incredibly hard. He's got decent links, right? Got big bad bosses. And if you are getting uh, to the point in the later stages where you're starting to take some damage, if you drop to 40% or less HP, then of course you get the evolution and transform into perfect cell. And then at that point, he really does start to hit incredibly hard. Um, if you do get the transformation with him, 
uh, but he's going to do insane damage and you potentially even just win the phase like on that turn right with uh, the perfect cell transformation so he is a unit that i would 100 percent recommend bringing on the team probably don't recommend trying to build a team around him as the leader but super worth having on the squad uh, then we have the Barbady, the free-to-play LR from the last anniversary. Now, this guy supports all extreme allies um, and has the high chance to dodge if there's a super-class enemy. So he can fulfill the role on this team of being a good little floating support unit that's buffing else everyone, uh, everyone else on the team while being an LR himself. So, of course, he has legendary power. So you're able to get that link active uh, more often, which is what we want. So we can do that extra damage. He does have the standby, um, but it can only be activated from turn four. And then, of course, like when you're in the standby turn, you can't attack and then have to charge it up. So you might get to turn four, be able to activate the standby, but then you're never going to see the payoff. So it's probably not even worth doing that, right? Like if turn four or five, if he's on turn four... And that's potentially going to be the last turn anyway. You're probably just better off him being in the normal state. So he's giving support to the other units on the rotation. And then they just finish off the fight that turn, right? So that being said, very, very good addition to the team. Very solid free-to-play option. So I would say he is definitely a great addition to the team as well. Um, then we have the Metal Cooler. Now, this is the one I wanted to talk about that's a little bit more interesting in the sense that he's on the category. So, of course, you could just run him on the team. Um, he builds up defense. He has that revival, which can come in very handy as well. Um, but he is a Wicked Bloodline 200% lead. So we've already mentioned like a couple of the Freezer units. But you could run double physical Metal Cooler and then just have a full Wicked Bloodline 200% team. Now, there's not as many LRs under Resurrected Warriors, right? Like, we talked about the Golden Freezer already. But in terms of the other Wicked Bloodline characters, there are quite a few that you can throw in. We do have this guy who is an LR, the Metal Cooler Army, and they link very well. This guy has type advantage. He's supporting artificial life forms, so he buffs the other Metal Cooler as well. Like, this guy and the physical LR Metal Cooler as a rotation together will do really, really well in this event. And of course, with the Ultra Super, they raise Extreme Class Allies attack 30% for two turns, which means they buff everybody on the next rotation as well. And then, of course, we're able to get a whole bunch of different uh, Wicked Bloodline characters. Uh, one of the things that you could do as well, which is, of course, very free-to-play friendly, is all of the free-to-play Metal Coolers that have their EZAs that all have different names because their name is specified by their typing, which means you can run all of them in an Extreme Z battle because they don't suffer from the whole you know can't run them together because they have the same name so you could run physical lr metal cooler or even if you don't have him right just run the this guy because he's technically free to play run him as the leader and run the full free to play metal cooler team now the stages will take a bit longer because you don't really have any lrs but you could definitely clear through the event with that team and then, of course, other Wicked Bloodline options. We have, like, the Tech Freezer is outdated now for super difficult content, but for things like EZA is definitely good. Getting that little bit of a heal at the start of the turn. Uh, you're never really going to see anything past second or maybe, if you're lucky, the third form. Um, but, yeah, he's going to be able to do a little bit of healing, do a little bit of damage. Got big bad bosses and things like that. So him next to, like, the in LR cell can still work fairly nicely. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, in terms of Wicked Bloodline, there definitely are some interesting options if you wanted to make an actual full-on Wicked Bloodline team, depending on what your options are for Resurrected Warriors leaders. So definitely worth considering. Uh, then we have the Garlic Junior. I really can't wait for this guy to get an easy A. Like when he came out, very, very good um, extreme class support character so this guy can still be very relevant on this team shares a good few links like big bad bosses and revival with the um, int cell uh, fierce battle of course uh, very very decent not crazy probably in the later stages will take some big damage from a super despite the type advantage but a very very good addition for just adding support to the team right like if you have your main rotations where you've got a couple of lrs getting legendary power active then having this guy in slot three to give them the extra three key and 40% attack means they are going to be able to get through the stage just that little bit faster, which is certainly beneficial. So Garlic Jr. worth considering for sure. Much older unit, 2021 he came out. So very much looking forward to his ECA. Um, and then last but not least here, we also have the Wheelo. Now I left him for last because he is AGL. So he's not necessarily going to be tanking supers uh, incredibly well. 
Uh, but he can be very good. Um, he gets extra buffs if there's a revenge ally on the team, which there's already a few of the units that we've talked about. Uh, Frieza, I'm pretty sure, is on revenge. Is the int... Um, is the int cell on revenge? Uh, he is as well, yeah. So there's a couple of good options for having this part of his passive active. Um, so he definitely can be good. Like, I used him all the way up to stage 999 in the family Kamehameha EZA. Now, of course, he had type advantage over that Goku, whereas here he has type disadvantage. But he can still be a solid option, and he's a free-to-play option, right? You might lose in, you know, the later stages if he's taking a super, but as a free-to-play option, he certainly is very solid. So, looking back at Resurrected Warriors... Uh, when it comes to the other LRs, like Marsha Vegeta, type disadvantage, outdated now. Tech Broly, outdated until he gets his EZA, unfortunately. Demon King Piccolo, I mean, he can be okay with the orbs, but it just doesn't really fit on the team very well. Um, I mean, Tech, uh, ooh, we didn't really talk about any super class units, but if you're running a team where he fits under the leader skill, he does also have the ability to transform and heal you if you drop below a certain amount of HP. So he could be kind of useful as well. And then when it comes to the TURs, we didn't talk about a huge amount of them because of the main focus on legendary power. There are a few uh, heroes characters that could be quite good, like Meki Kabra and the Golden Metal Cooler. Um, the Skinny Boo has always been kind of good for EZAs because he has that big defense buff for the first few turns as well as dodge. But not really going to be great here, right? Especially with the type disadvantage. Um, but when we look down at like the int characters... Um, you know, some of these units like the Giant Form Demigra, Margin Vegeta, like some of these guys can be decent in this event as placeholders if you really are struggling, but they're obviously not really in that sort of top picks or honorable mentions uh, kind of level. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Like I said at the beginning, if there's any units you think I missed out or I should have talked more about why they would be good for the team, let me know down below. And of course, let us know what your team build is going to be for the LR Super Zen 3 Goku Extreme Z Battle in the comment section. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.